Hello everyone, I'm Tsurugi Kage. And I'm Kentaro. Welcome to Gaming Tidbits Review. Today, we're going to review Disgaea 5 on the PS4. Disgaea 5 is the first Disgaea game on Sony's new system, the PS4, and created by Nippon ET Software. They've boasted that with this new hardware, they can make a total number of 100 units on the screen at the same time with no frame rate issues. The game looks like it's a large leap ahead from what we're normally used to seeing in the Disgaea games. I can't wait to tackle it. Enough yabbery. Let's get on with it. Is... is there something wrong? No. Let's just get started. Alright, well, let's get started with the story. The story follows the antics of a series of overlords as they head out to defeat the Overlord Emperor, called Void Dark, and his army known as the Lost. The first one we see is Serafina, overlord for the gorgeous Netherworld. She meets Kelia on the battlefield and he agrees to help her. As the two venture together, they come across Red Magnus, overlord to the burning Netherworld. After he joins, they later get confronted by Christo, a strategist and leader of the giant netherworld. On a mission to a beach-like netherworld, they come across Zeroken. He's got a personality that changes based upon who his opponent is. Finally, they meet up with Usalia, overlord to the rapid netherworld. She has a peculiar curse on her that turns into a snarling crazed beast if she doesn't get any curry so often. It is up to these netherworlds to defeat Void Dark and end his tyranny, bringing peace to all the netherworlds once again. That's good and all, but how about we get to something I can exploit? The gameplay. Fair enough. I kind of forgot you can't read Japanese. Let's talk about the basics first. The game is a 3D grid-based tactical RPG. Each character can move up and down the grid so many spaces for each turn and can go so high up the grid itself. Each level can have these glowing tiles called geo panels. When a geo block is placed on a panel, all panels of that color get that panel's effect. There are two types of characters, monsters and humans. Humans have a larger variety of weapons to choose from, and monsters have a special trick called magic change, each one of them making them turn into a weapon itself for a human class. All monster class, human class, and human weapons each have their own skills to go along with them. Going into the Dark Assembly to pass bills for better items in the shop, tougher enemies, and creating new characters can level up your characters up to level 9999, and the stats can go beyond 1 million. Level 9999? That's... That's... It's over 9000! Really? I couldn't resist. Well... Now I'm going to talk about the new things in this game. First, they change how you can get troops and create characters. Rather than going into the Dark Assembly and using mana, you now use your cash, or hell in this game, to buy new characters and even train them up to levels that other characters are up to, therefore cutting back on the grinding. They also made a new thing where you can complete submissions and get rewards. These quests can be destroy this many objects in this many areas, this get this class up to this rank, defeat this many of this enemy, and so on and so forth. Doing so unlocks better items, more classes, and cash. In the base, you can spend out some of your characters and actually go exploring independently. Sometimes they'll find a boss for you to fight, sometimes they'll find rare items, and sometimes they'll just come back empty-handed. In battle, they added a new mechanic called the Revenge System. If an ally has taken damage, has been killed, or has killed an enemy that was in Revenge Mode, that character automatically goes into Revenge Mode itself. It boosts that character's stats and lowers the damage that it takes, but it doesn't last that long. Another thing is, is that if an Overlord goes into Revenge Mode, they can activate a special skill called Malgi. Serafina makes male enemy units confused and basically infatuated with her. Christo increases the party's evasiveness, Red Magnus can grow large and have tremendous strength, and this is just to name a few. Monsters now have a new ability called Monster Toss, where they will literally toss a unit by so many places and not really pick them up. Just don't do it to a pretty because 
they'll blow up. Well, that's good to know. But when is the game coming out? Calm down, I'm getting to it. The game will be released on October 6th, according to my sources anyways. And as such, here are a few tips that will help you out and make this game a little bit easier and a little bit more fun for you. Look at the area well. Look at all the new enemies and see all the special skills they have, as well as any geo panels that are around the area. See how you can try and match that up to your strategy. Don't be afraid to replay earlier levels with increased difficulty. It'll give you more cash, more mana, and more EXP that'll help beef up your guys. Or girls. Once you unlock the Dark Assembly, try to unlock the Cheat Shop in one of the bills. It'll allow you to make adjustments to the game, such as how much money you make, how much EXP you get from defeating the enemy, and even some other fun tricks that you can mess around with. Always go after an enemy who is in revenge mode. Not only will it make the one who kills him go into revenge mode, but it'll also give you an item which allows you to boost the character's stats. Characters can equip two types of weapons, but they can only use one weapon when attacking. Normally this wouldn't be such a good idea, but for spellcasting classes, this actually helps them out because they can not only wield the staff, which increases their magic range, but a normal weapon which can increase their physical attack damage. Alright, let's get everything squared and rated. Alright then. Well, I give this game a 10 out of 10. I give the game a 7 out of 10. Re really Well, I can't help it. I can't understand Japanese. So, you dress like a samurai and call yourself a Japanese name? Look, I like to dress up in the costume and I like their culture. So what if I can't speak the language? Okay, okay, I'm not trying to judge you. Uh, anyways, this is Gaming Tippets Review, signing out. Thank you so much for watching my episode. If you want to see more, click on my subscribe button and it'll let you know when I make more episodes. Or if you want to, you can click over here and you can take me to my next video.